All right, welcome again. Some of you are for first time others. Um, let's see. Uh, John, do you mind going through the three of us and calling us out for the official yes. call? Yes, sir. All right, Andrew Klein. I am present. Tony Doan. Here. Corey Wilker. Here. All right, looks like we have a quorum. Perfect. Um, so would, one sec, my, uh, showing the wrong screen. Okay, um, would other folks who are joining us like to announce themselves and who they represent, if anyone other than themselves? <clears throat> well, it's Dave Cocott. I'm the president of the Washington State Association of Farm Marshals. Thank you, Dave. John Sue, a technical consultant with Washington Association of Building Officials. Thank you, John. I am Kim Barker with City of Bellingham. Thank you, Kim. Good morning, Jed Sherman with the IATMO Group. Thanks, Jed. All righty. Well, let's get started. So, review and approve the agenda. I did tell Kim in our meeting yesterday that we could discuss her um, issue that she brought to her attention first. So she didn't have to stay around for the entire meeting. So I'd like to propose that we put that between three and four, if folks are okay with that. Um, could, I, um, could I make an uh, amendment to that and say sure. we can probably get rid of number four just because nothing, we have no update from the last time. Okay, well, let's replace number four then um, okay. with with uh, the Kim show. And so I'll make that the official motion. And Tony? I'll second that. Perfect. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, approved. So number three, re uh, review and approve the minutes from last month. Tony, they look great to me. Yep, looks good to me. I'll make a motion to approve. All right, thanks. Second. Thank you, Corey. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? And motion passes. Kim, are you ready to, to talk? Or? Yeah, definitely. Okay, Thank you. John, are you <laughs> able to pull up the email that Kim sent yesterday? That would be great. Let's see, yeah, it'll take me a, a minute here. Okay. So the question I have is in regards to IBC section uh, 3002.4, the elevator car to accommodate ambulance stretcher. So what we found is that in the 2015 IBC, the state amended this section to require the ambulance stretcher sized gurney or the elevator car in any group R1, R2, or group I occupancy buildings, regardless of number of stories. It does not look like that made it into the 2018 IBC. And I reached out to building code council staff and then also Dean Giles, who was on the IBC tag. And it seems like this might've been um, just an oversight. It looks like the tag approved or the recommended it to be approved. And it just didn't make it into the code. So I guess my question perhaps is twofold. Is there any way to go back and um, do an errata or emergency rule for 2018 IBC? And then can we consider it for the 2021 adoption as well? Uh, for 2018 IBC, it won't work if we uh, uh, try to do editorial with CR 105 because what happened, uh, the TAC uh, uh, recommended something uh, but it wasn't uh, incorporated into the report. So the report was saying something else. Mm -hmm. and, and when the council voted on this section, the council uh, approved the report saying that we need to delete this uh, existing amendment because it's uh, duplicative. Uh, and uh, I guess something happened between the, the TAC recommendation and uh, the council meeting. So 
the council the council specifically voted on this section not to uh, continue adopting it so okay. the uh, cr 105 for 2018 won't work for 2021 i think we can uh, uh, add it uh, to the list if uh, the uh, tag uh, the standing committee and the council uh, decides to do that okay Brian, um, on the the word document that's up now where it says amendment needed no is that referring to does the amendment that's in because this says recommend keeping the 2015 amendment that's the reviewer comments and then amend needed is a no does that mean that it doesn't need to change anything or they don't need this amendment because the way this looks it looks like the peg agreed no amendment needed but the recommendation was to keep the amendment so i'm a little confused on that it's uh, it, it is confusing yeah tony uh it was uh it was confusing even when we were doing it. Um, that was, um, it was a former director's uh, verbiage. Um, hmm. uh, tag agrees amendment needed, um, no amendment needed, meaning that they didn't have to make another amendment. So that's how if I'm, I'm reaching back in my memory banks on how that works. So no amendment was needed. They were just going to keep the old amendment <laughs> is how that was. Okay. How I, I, I guess the message was transferred in a wrong way to the report and then to the council. Oh, I see. We we corrected a few sections that you know the council voted on something, but when we were filing, we didn't file the right section because it was changed at the last meeting, at the last council meeting. So this is editorial because the council voted on something and and uh, uh, it wasn't filed correctly. But that one is different because the council did vote to approve. The report, which was uh, this section, was included with the strikeout. But can that be included as an errata? If if well, it, it's not an errata if the council voted to uh, repeal it. This is how I understand it. So oh, you're saying they did vote to repeal it? I thought you were just did, saying no, no, no. You did vote to repeal it because it was part of the. Uh, of the report. Unfortunately, we didn't have the recordings, I think, uh, uh, for this particular uh, meeting, but uh, our research showed that this is what exactly happened. Am I, am I incorrect in assuming that, that they voted to remove it, maybe without knowing or unintentionally? Is that what I'm getting from this? Uh, well, that's the, case, the, I mean, rational, the rational the rational the rationale for adopt for not adopting the existing amendment and how it's filed uh, with the CR uh, 102 and the CR 103 says that uh, uh, the language uh, is duplicative. I don't know why I didn't find a similar language. So we thought it would be something with uh, labor and industries because at the same time they were updating their uh, uh, regulations for elevators. Uh, uh, Ray did some research and he didn't find anything related to it. So if Kim wants this put in, what are her options? If it's for 2021, uh, if it's a, recommenda a recommendation by the uh, a standing committee and it will go to the council, so I think we can add it. Uh, for 2018, I'm not sure we can do with CR 105. Uh, so this is my opinion at this time. Um, emergency rulemaking, I guess. And um, Krista is here, so she may want to correct me. She She's kind of shy. She doesn't like correcting me, but Krista? I'm not sure that this would um, fall under the requirements for an emergency rule. It wouldn't meet the minimum qualifications for an emergency rule. It would just have to be off cycle rulemaking. So it would be a permanent rule, extra hearing, or included in another hearing on just that specific issue. What's, uh, I, I hate to get into the weeds on that portion, Krista, but if I may, if, what's the, what what is the qualifying um, parameters for emergency rule in a nutshell, if you can. That's probably a, too much of a loaded question, but. 
Uh, imminent danger to health and safety. Um, I think there's an economic trigger in there somewhere. I'd have to go back and look at the exact language. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, Krista, could I reach out to you to to do the off-cycle rulemaking and see if I can be a proponent of that? It would be up to the council. They would need to vote to. Um, but if you wanted to submit a proposal for off-cycle rulemaking, Yes, okay. Uh, okay, so it sounds like you two can put that paperwork together and you know, then we'll discuss it at the council. And then I'm assuming you're asking us to um, consider this for inclusion uh, to send to the council tomorrow as part of the standing committee recommendation. Correct, Kim? Yes, and Andrew, correct me, that would be for the 2021. That's proposal. correct. Yep. Yep. That so, would be great. All right. Um, I see no reason why we can't consider it. Are we allowed to take a vote on that? Um, Before we do Mike, that, could I ask Dave, Dave uh, Cocott has his hand raised. Sure. Go ahead, Dave. All right. Thank you. Uh, obviously, we have some, the fire marshals have quite an interest in that uh, piece of code because of the uh, response of our crews and stuff uh, showing up to the scene. Uh, <clears throat> I, I see this as a, a, a improving uh, a potential health issue and safety issue. I think it does qualify as an emergency rule, and I would recommend that the BIP take it as such. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Micah. Yeah, uh, just to clarify from Kim, are you talking about the amended language or actually the entire 30? 02.4 section, uh, 3002.4 section is, I mean, there's there's part of that that is part of the base model code for the 2021. And so if there's no amendment that needs to be made, then that section should automatically be adopted unless we choose to amend it out for the 2021. The amendment is an additive to the model code language that requires the elevator car gurney sized in additional occupancies. So group R1, R2, and I occupancies of any height, the model code is just four stories or more. Okay, so you're asking for the amendment specifically. The amendment, yes. Thank you. John, can you let me share my screen? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. And then there was a chat, John uh, she chatted. Um, there's a note in the chat as well. Okay, can you see this uh, document with uh, the emergency rule? Yep. Okay, so the, the, uh, this is the uh, uh, detail for the emergency rules and amendments that uh, Krista was looking for. I'm seeing the, the whack right now. Yeah, actually, it went to the WAC. Oh, it did? Yeah. OK. Different screen. Did. Now? Oh, yep. Yep, yep. OK. The highlighted area is specific to uh, the request for emergency. Thank you, Stoyan. Any, any further discussion? I guess I would just say that from our fire department in Bellingham, they would probably argue with Dave Cocott that this is, you know, in the best interest of public health and could be an emergency rule. And when you say with, you mean alongside, <laughs> since yes. that could be two things. Yeah. Um, any any further comment? Uh, Tony and. Um, uh, Sorry, Corey, <laughs> I forgot your name there for a second. Uh, what are your thoughts? I would rather see this as a, an emergency rule at this time. So that's, that would be the direction I'd like to go. I would too, it's a clear safety issue. 
Okay. Um, so are we able to direct staff then to um, put the documentation together um, as an emergency rule? Well, it needs to go to a council too. Right. Well, for the vote. So, you know, whatever, whatever we need to take that to the council. Um, well, we, we'd be looking, sorry, Andrew, real quick, if you don't mind, because we, we need no something to vote on. And so we need, we need, we're, I think what Andrew's saying is we're, we're seeing if staff can bring forward the language for us to vote on to push it to council. Yeah, that, that's what I was asking if that was the appropriate um, procedure there. We can make it ready for tomorrow. The problem is it's not on the agenda, so it needs to be added in the same way it was added today. If, if the target is the council meeting uh, uh, tomorrow, the other option is in, in October. I would say it's probably easiest October if, uh, if you two are okay with that. Yep. Corey and Tony, but I like that. Okay. Um, okay. Is that clear enough direction? We'll take a vote on that. Yeah. Do we need a motion? Yes. So moved. All right. Very good. Any further okay. discussion? No. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? I hope not. Uh, All righty, motion passes. Thank so, you. All right, yeah, thank you, Kim, for bringing that up to our attention. All right, um, so there's nothing on HB 2701, so we'll get into our code change proposals, the IBC first. Um, We don't need anything from this uh, uh, log because everything was approved at the meeting, I think, on 27. Yep. Is there anything specific you want me to pull up? Well, uh, if we are going to start with IBC, then we need to show the report that was discussed yesterday. This? Uh, no. The report that was discussed yesterday. Okay. okay. The uh, existing uh, existing amendments report. Okay. Let me see if I can find that. Is that? I can. I can show. I can show mine if you if you can. Yeah, it's on. Um, I will pull it up. I think. There we go. That's the right one. Yes. Okay. So, Andrew, how 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 do you wanna? Uh, um, you know, maybe we can do a summary uh, just of everything that was voted on, and then, you know, maybe we can take a single vote, uh, you know, in discussion if anyone wants to pull anything out to discuss individually, but I, I'd i like to take a single vote on everything that, that we took an actual vote in the tag on. Okay. Are you going to explain what we did, or you want me... To do it. Um, yeah, I'll let you since uh, you know you explained so well yesterday. Unless you uh, well, since we spent four hours, I don't know if I did explain <laughs> well, but I'll try again. So, uh, what happened was we uh, the TAC approved the IBC uh, TAC existing amendment report. Uh, however, when I was trying to incorporate the information from the report to the document with all uh, existing state amendments, um, I started finding some inconsistencies or uh, I provided uh, a further uh, 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 recommendations uh, based on the research uh, we did uh, for uh, specific sections. 
So on this report, you will see with green, then it's everything, uh, everything is good. And with red, uh, I ask the TAC members to vote on these sections because uh, the recommendation and uh, the further study, the further research didn't match with the uh, uh, initial TAC report. So the TAC members did vote on each of these uh, uh, proposals. Uh, and uh, now I can go in detail on these sections or uh, I can tell you what the decision was and you can, uh, I, I, I don't know uh, how you, you focus. So, yeah, so we've got all that information up here um, on the, the votes, I believe, right? Except recommendation. So, uh, um, yeah, what I'd like to do is, is if anyone has any particular items that they'd like to discuss further, and we went up through which chapter was it that we took votes on? We, we, we took votes on all chapters except uh, chapter 29. Uh, I, I knew there was uh, an additional work to be done, but uh, I didn't feel competent to do it myself. So we ended up with uh, nothing in chapter 29. So, so okay. far, uh, the decision was to keep the, the existing uh, amendments. John, if you can stop sharing, I can, I can show the updated, the updated report. Uh, the updated report wasn't posted on the website because the meeting was yesterday and I completed it too late last night. So I, I, uh, it was too late to post it. It wasn't uh, uh, 24 hours uh, in advance. So what you will see on your screen now, do you see the, the report? Yeah. Okay, so what you see in the screen, uh, you don't see as part of the posted documents for the meeting. Again, it was updated late last night. So for chapter one, the, all this section, the decision of the TAC members was to adopt the model code. So you can see the initial recommendation was uh, keep existing amendments and the staff comment was existing amendment is no longer needed it's covered by the model code uh, we had a short discussion on chapter one and it was the decision the recommendation by the TAC uh, uh, member so it's it's different from the initial and it was uh, i'm showing here adopt model code adopt model code adopt so each one of these were uh, uh, approved Okay, and then we did have some uh, dealing with uh, um, eye occupancies that we did not make recommendations on yet. So. I, I, I'll, I'll get there. Yes. So this is this is chapter one. I'll go chapter by chapter if if you're okay with that. Okay. Yeah. Tony, uh, Corey, would you like a chapter by chapter um, um, summary? <clears throat> what? So last time we pushed items forward to um, the council is this right. what's left so what what, the, yeah. what these are is uh what we pushed forward to the council as stoyan and uh um uh folks were putting the language in um they noticed that some of our recommendations dealing with the existing amendments whether we keep them or not um were incorrect so what this is, is um, the new recommendations kind of for a second review um, that, that Stoyan brought back to us to look at. Okay, I would be for, you know, re reviewing, you know, anything that was significantly discussed or changed, but I don't think there's a need for like, like to go over all this renumbering stuff and all that, but if we can get the, you know, the, the short and dirty cliff notes, I think that'd be probably best. Yeah. I, I mean, otherwise, okay. I'll, 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 I'll try to address the significant ones. Okay. Yeah. And then, then we'll vote on the ones that we didn't, uh, or we'll, we'll individually discuss and take votes on the items that we, the tag didn't vote on. And then if anyone wants to pull out individual um, items that were voted on to rediscuss, we can do that. But um, if not, we'll just vote on all those together, is how I'd like to proceed. 
Okay. So uh, the definition for nightclub, uh, what we did, uh, well, th what the council did uh, years ago, uh, copy paste from uh, uh, RCW. And uh, currently the definition refers to 2006 uh, IBC. Um, and the decision was to delete the reference to 2006 IBC. Uh, I can show the definition here. Here is the def definition for nightclubs, and this was the recommendation. Uh, do you see the the text in in red? Yes. Okay. So this is how it looks like. Without the reference, it will refer to A two occupancies and uh, A two occupancies uh, 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 explained in uh, uh, chapter three. Is there any significant changes to the def to the definition or examples of A2 occupancies between the 06 and the 21? Not much between 2006 and 2021. Okay, all right. It was because at that time, uh, uh, the 2006 International Building Code was uh, uh, effective, the effective code. And uh, this is how it got there. And again, we did copy paste from the statute. Uh, 2006 International Building Code is part of the RCW. Uh, there was a question, I think, yesterday. Micah, I think you asked the question. Uh, and uh, we don't necessarily, we are not required to copy paste the, the, the language from the statute. We can make it uh, 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 clearer or more specific. Uh, and. Uh, the, the reason for this uh, eliminating two, the reference to 2006 is uh, to make it, uh, to provide my, uh, more clarity on that. That makes sense. Okay, thank you. Okay. Go, going further. That is not that important. So this one is uh, it just a, a f formatting issue. Uh, following the ah, Micah is raising his hand. Uh, uh, oh, go ahead, Micah. Here, unless sorry, you're I just, want raise. To, <laughs> I just didn't want to butt in, but um, I did ask some questions on that. I, I know in the past, um, especially when we're talking EV legislation, we have said that hey, this was in the legislation or it's an RCW and we should not be modifying that language. And so now on this one, we're saying we should, I agree we should change it, but I guess that's my question. In other instances, we have not, but in this one, we're saying it's okay. And, and that was my question from yesterday because the nightclub definition is actually an RCW. So that was my only concern. Yeah, I think it's fine to change it. I'm gonna hold you to that, Andrew, on some other stuff then. <laughs> you know i may evolve in my opinion perfect don't we all <laughs> thanks yeah thank you micah okay uh section 407.4.4.3 this is access to corridors there was a recommendation for further review uh, after the, uh, so the further recommendation uh, from the TAC members will review new language for this section in 2021 and make sure it still correlates. And uh, the staff research showed that the rationale for the existing amendment was uh, the existing, and I'll show you the section later, but uh, the rationale for the existing amendment was to avoid conflicts with the federal requirements. So now the model code is modified to reflect changes in the federal rules. Uh, this is why the staff recommendation was uh, to adopt the model code language. So during the discussion yesterday, uh, there was a suggestion that we coordinate with the Department of Health. And, um, uh, I didn't uh, coordinate, I didn't have the time. I know Andrew 
sent uh, uh, emails to the uh, appropriate uh, party from the Department of Health, but I don't know if we have anybody from DOH uh, uh, now. Yeah, the, the two folks that I reached out to weren't able to come. Did anyone else? Uh, I don't see anyone on the list here. So, yeah. So we'll do the best we can. And, you know, there's still opportunities if we mess up to fix it. Here is, here is the section. Right here. It's a working document, so you, you see it with the strikeout, but uh, it will be changed based on the uh, uh, decision uh, uh, made by the council. But this is this is the section that, that I'm talking to, uh, I'm talking about. So again, the rationale shows that we, uh, our amendment is for consistency uh, with uh, the federal uh, 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 standards. There was an exception uh, allowing 125 feet travel distance and uh, our amendment is just striking out this uh, moral code language. So now the updated language is uh, 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 consistent with the federal standard and it, it seems that there is no logic behind, uh, you know, continuing with, with this existing amendment. But again, I, uh, we didn't have the time to coordinate with the Department of Health. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say, yeah, we should probably delete. So, so we would delete the amendment and go with model code language. Yes. Okay. I'll make that motion uh, that we do that. Okay. Thank you, Tony. Any further discussion? Um, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? And motion passes. The next one is uh, uh, 420 uh, 12. Uh, one for 20.12.1. Uh, uh, the recommendation was to keep the existing amendment. However, in the existing amendment, there was a reference to 420.7.8, which was misleading because this section doesn't exist. And uh, the recommendation yesterday was to refer to section 1012, which makes uh, uh, more sense. I, I, I assume we were the, the uh, requirements were initially in 427.8, but year after year, we were readopting it. Uh, but now uh, the requirements for ramps are in 1012. So the decision was to refer to section 1012 instead uh, of 420.7.8. We can probably uh, push forward for, uh, you know, most of these were pretty benign. Um, we can probably move forward just to the uh, ones that need individual voting on. Um, Tony, Corey, unless you disagree. That sounds good. Okay. I'm good. And then John had mentioned he wanted to discuss loft stuff. Um, so we will do that after, after we take the motions on the individual items before we, uh, you know, do the the uh, big vote on all the others. We have a few sections that I almost forgot to mention. Um, I tried to uh, evaluate and compare the fire code with the building code. Uh, I got some sections uh, uh, in chapter 10, but I think I'm still missing sections from chapter nine and chapter seven. So some of these, you'll see a message coordinate with uh, uh, the international uh, uh, fire code. So what was happening, uh, the building code tag was moving ahead. So the building code tag was making decisions on specific sections and the fire code tag was making changes to these sections 
uh, this is one example, there are a few others, but uh, the, the fire code was making changes to these sections. Uh, so now uh, the language uh, doesn't uh, match. So we need to coordinate with that or some existing amendments. You can see the amendment in the building code and don't see it in the fire code or vice versa. Uh, so there are some coordination issues that I believe uh, it should be staff uh, taking care of it. Uh, but uh, if uh, the uh, fire code tag and the building code tag want to make a decision on those coordination uh, issues, we will have it available, but after the meeting on 17th, we, uh, uh, we don't have this comparison document yet. Yeah. Thank you. So all this, we didn't have uh, uh, a big uh, issues on these sections. Uh, so uh, again, the uh, updated report uh, will be uh, posted on the website. I will post it for the meeting uh, uh, tomorrow. This was uh, uh, a difficult one. So, and uh, we didn't have a vote on it yesterday because um, I needed more time to research it. There is a section, there is a section uh, which is uh, new uh, in the model code. So we have a state amendment in section 10.10.1.10.3, and I'll show you the section uh, later. Um, unfortunately, as many other sections, I, I couldn't find the rationale for the uh, adoption of this section. So that it, it, we were just readopting it. I don't see the rationale. What is it? Uh, there is another section which is new in 2021 IBC 10.10.2. 2.9.2, and again, I will show you the sections. And uh, this section replaces uh, uh, the last paragraph in another section. Uh, I know many sections, but 10, 10, 1, 10. So uh, you can see my comment in, in the uh, red uh, uh, area. And here are my options. Repeal the existing amendment or relocate it as section 10.10.2941. And uh, uh, let me uh, uh, show you the, the section. Sorry about that. Interesting. Apologize. Two nine four. Okay, sorry about that. So here is the section. Uh, this is how the existing amendment reads. Uh, you, equipment operating at more than 600 volts, uh, uh, 600 volts or, or less. Uh, this is our amendment. And here is the model code. They changed this and now this is how it reads. We had another discussion with another section uh, that was referring to the uh, National Electrical Code. Uh, the issues with enforcement, you know, some jurisdictions, they don't enforce the Electrical Code. This is labor and industries. 
so I was I was uh, having a hard time to provide a single recommendation on that. The uh, recommendation by the council uh, by the TAC was the initial recommendation was uh, keep uh, a state amendment. Um, which one's more restrictive? I don't think they are comparable because the new model code is uh, uh, have the information related to Ampers uh, and it re refers to uh, NEC and the existing amendment uh, is making the requirement based on the voltage. It seems that like uh, this is the requirement uh, uh, similar text in the uh, National Electrical Code. Okay, I'd say we leave it. Um... Um, Discussion? Yeah, I, I, it's kind of tough in this setting is my, um, is I think is my, my issue with tackling this now just because we don't have a ton of the background on it. And I'm hesitant on removing it um, because I can't imagine these numbers were just thrown out there for fun. So there had to be a justification behind it. So without the justification being brought forward, I'm, I'm uneasy on removing it at the BFP unless the TAG had found something that was significant or something that's changed in industry or, you know, that I'm, I'm not comfortable in removing it myself. So I'd be leaning the same way, Andrew. Okay, you want to make a motion? Yes. All right, and I'll second it. Okay. <laughs> um, well, any... Make a motion to leave the Washington State Amendment as is. Yep, any further discussion? Can I add something to it? Yeah, of course. Uh, if, if we leave it, which is okay, we'll leave it, but uh, we'll have two sections close to each other and and uh, will be difficult with enforcement. This is how I see it. And again, I'm not on the enforcement part, but uh, Micah is here. And if we have uh, Tony is in enforcement too. Mm -hmm. So th this is in the model code. Uh, and exit or access access door serving transformer vaults, you know, whatever it is, but it provides some requirements for uh, exit hardware. And here is the other, the other one that uh, makes, uh, uh, provides requirements, direction of figures travel uh, and the panic hardware. So I, if I'm in the enforcement, I'll be having a hard time, which one uh, I need to, I need to apply. So, well, I guess you'd apply both, right? Um, if we decide to keep it, yes, you have to okay. apply both. So, so Tony, would you consider it a friendly amendment if we moved it, renumbered it um, as the option two that's shown on the screen there as 1010-2941, I think? Yeah. The existing amendment is located after section 1010-294. So we will have it as 10102941. You know, the, the, the chapter was uh, uh, renumbered. Okay. Uh, I see John John has his hand raised. Yep, yeah. go ahead, John. Yeah, I just want to chime in a little bit on the enforcement side. I do think that you have to kind of pick one or the other. I think that's kind of what Stoyan is saying. You, you either stick with the state amendment and delete uh, the IBC language, or you do the reverse. I don't think you can do both because I do think it will create a conflict that people are going to kind of tear their hair out over. Well, out of the two, I would say we stick with the um, the amended language because it looks number two operating at 600 volts. So basically it, it's capturing everything rated at 800 amps or more, um, which which is what the model code language says. So, yeah, I, Tony, what do you think? Did, did you want both in still or you, did you think we should amend um, to have just the amendment in? 1010, 10, just for clarification, the 1010, 1103, is the amendment as it sits right now at the at Washington state level. 
That's correct. Okay. 1010, is it 294? Is our other section, right? Uh, it's model language. 294, right. yes, yes. So the language is similar. It just, right, right, it's right. not verbatim. Right, but 1010, 292 here in front of us. Yes. That didn't go in. That is this the okay? Go back up to ten ten one ten three. Sorry. If it's not one or the other, then I would lean towards. Or if it has to be one or the other, I would lean towards the amendment. But again, that's only because I'm lacking the background in this setting to make that call. And I don't have a good enough understanding and I haven't had the, the conversation to fully understand what does what and the reasons for it. And so it would be my recommendation now um, to adopt the Washington state language instead of, but I think with further discussion, and some more research, we could probably clean this up a little bit, but I don't, maybe we don't have that option. All right, I, I still don't see, uh, you know, John, maybe you can explain it or Mike, if you still remember, uh, you know, back when uh, you were, I think you were an electrician, you'd said, um, but, you know, I don't see how they're incompatible there. It's just that our amendment also includes the 600 volt threshold. Um, the model code also, let me see. Yeah, you're right. The 60 volt threshold is not in the model code. So this, the highlighted text right here was the existing text in the model code. So in the ICC uh, 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 model code version, this text is no longer there. It's replaced by, you know, it's reorganized a little bit, but it's replaced by this section. And when you read this section and this, they are not the same. Uh, but they're not this. They're not the same. But you would either uh, one of them would either apply, or wouldn't, or they both apply. I don't see. You know, I don't see a conflict. Uh, yeah, Krista. Well, whatever the decision is, uh, we will uh, follow it. Okay. At a minimum, uh, I believe. Andrew, you explain. I've got a comment. I can. Oh yeah. Uh, but well, Krista, do you want to talk first, and then then Rod, you can. I would recommend that if you do keep the state amendment, you change the title because it now has absolutely nothing to do with clearances. All right. Good point. Thank you, Rod. Well, I was just going to say I haven't I haven't reviewed these proposals, but as far as enforcement with labor and industries, uh, the exit uh, listed fire exit hardware is required by the NEC, and and these are both of these uh, the existing uh, amendment and the new language is consistent with what it requires in the NEC as far as the 600 volts and the 800 amps. Uh, and so we would enforce the NEC, but this is not in conflict with the NEC, either one of them. So I, I think it would be fine to go either direction with it. Either direction? Well, what about leaving both? Well, I'm looking at the 2021 model language and I think that covers it. Uh, I, I think it refers to the same requirements in, in the NEC that we would enforce. So I think the 2021 language would cover it and the amendment wouldn't be required. Thank you, Rod. Well, you know, if we get rid of the amendment, it's easy. We don't have to change any titles. 
<laughs> well, yes, uh, for staff, it's easy to get rid of the amendment, but it's not necessarily that it's the best thing to. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I would go with the model code, but again, I, I, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not on the enforcement part, so I'm not. All right, so oh, Tony, um, you made the original motion. Did you want to keep it John, and uh, vote on it, or did you want to amend it in any way? John is raising his hand. Sorry, Andrew. Yep. To put you Go ahead, John. Sorry, I, I just want to throw in there that I think uh, um, looks like Kim dropped off. Um, she would have argued just in yesterday's discussion. I think she would have argued to keep the model code language because uh, it is. There's more to NEC than what we reproduce here. So, all right. So, if it's a democracy, it sounds like the model code language wins. Uh, so. Tony, uh, floor is yours. What, what are you thinking? I'll amend my um, <clears throat> original motion to <clears throat> keep the model language for 2021 and remove the Washington State Amendment. All right, and I'll, uh, I'll second that. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All righty. Um, can we actually uh, go to the loft um, uh, discussion? John Sue wanted to um, talk about that and he's got to jump off in a half hour or so. I, in, if this is the case, I need to stop uh, sharing. And uh, uh, John, I guess you need to go back to your uh, log. John, are you you ready to talk about it now? Yeah, sure. I, I just um, wanted to discuss that. Um, this is the issue about whether how you know how tall can unregulated stairs and ladders be to these lofts. We kind of talked about it at the last BFP meeting, and the BFP pushed it back to the tag um, at the, on uh, the August twenty seventh. This yeah, this is a was item I think seventy four on the on the log, but um, so the whole question was whether or not you we we should keep the ten foot restriction on these unregulated. Uh, ladders that have been in the code since the mid '90s. <laughs> um, essentially, the the existing Washington State Code uh, has allowed uh, stairs and you know unregulated stairs and ladders to spaces less than 200 square feet with some uh, some limitations. Uh, what we are proposing in this in our block proposal is to go ahead and just say. Sure, you can have unregulated these unregulated uh, stairs and ladders, but they can only be t up to ten feet high. Uh, the BFP pushed it back to the tag. The tag looked at it um, and discussed it on the on September first, and uh, I, the vote was to push it back at with the ten foot uh, um, requirement on there. Uh, and so, I just want to make sure uh, be here to see if there are any questions about that or is any discussion. Mm. Thank you, John. Um, I've got no questions. Anyone else have any questions? So I think your uh, I think your proposal is safe. I don't think it's controversial at all. So. I I'll let you know if you don't hear from me, then everything went smoothly. Otherwise, I, I'll tell you if, if it died. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, John. So all right. I apologize for that. Uh, interlude um so okay I'm, I'm i'm moving back to the report and if we are discussing only the the uh, complicated sections uh yesterday there was a lot of talking and tw chapter 29 uh i so this is the report with the recommendations and i tried to evaluate every single one, but I didn't feel I was knowledgeable enough on chapter 29. Uh, the issue with chapter 29, I, I mean, you know better than me, uh, in, in Washington state, the applicable code is we are adopting the uniform uh, uh, UPC 
and uh, uh, IBC refers to the International Plumbing Code. So uh, chapter 29 in the Washington State Building Code is uh, almost, uh, the entire chapter is an amendment because we want the information from the Uniform Plumbing Code. So there were many recommendations here based on the fact that the new model code language can be used we can incorporate some of it but again i wasn't uh didn't feel i'm smart enough i was smart enough to uh propose anything uh i i couldn't evaluate it i didn't know the history so i i, I got stuck with it and uh, uh there was uh, uh, at least uh, 30 minutes talking about chapter 29 yesterday i didn't write any notes but i think the what I've heard was to uh, keep the as it is, but Andrew will correct me if if, if I'm wrong. You you're muted, Andrew. Oh, sorry about that. Um, no, I I don't think you're wrong about that. Um, so we've got. So you're recommending that the requirements be incorporated in the table instead of the current state amendments. Um, so that we leave the uh, 2021 model code language, correct? Well, with the initial report, there wasn't a recommendation. It, the recommendation was to evaluate the uh, uh, new code language and the existing amendments and, and uh, uh, propose something or uh, uh, advice if uh, we need to take into account all these notes. I did, but uh, again, I, I couldn't provide uh, uh, recommendations because I didn't feel I had the all the information I needed. All right. Um discussion. You know what California does in the residential code since they don't adopt the uh unif the uh mechanical code, they uh you know just strike all of it and say to go to the uniform mechanical code. But, yeah, the same with the plumbing code. They just strike out everything, but uh, they don't have uh, 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 state amendments to these chapters. And with Washington, it's different. So we incorporate language from uh, the Uniform Plumbing Code, and it's in Chapter 29. Right. Um, discussion? Yeah, so I'm confused. Are, if, if, we, if we are accepting this, are we, are we then if if the UPC uh, when we get into the plumbing amendments part of it will the UPC supersede or will this supersede because there could be conflicts with again number of fixtures there's a whole bunch of things that could go like they wouldn't jive the UPC and the well, IBC this is why we have uh, 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 the table from the UPC in chapter 29 uh, the language is uh, consistent with UPC and Krista uh, is raising her hand so she uh, uh, can provide more information on it. Thank you. Doug, your stuff. Right. We uh, delete out the chapter or the table in the UPC and just have the IBC chapter that was initially done just for the uh, convenience of design professionals so they would, when they're designing facilities and in buildings that they wouldn't have to go to the plumbing code and do that too. Um, but it's also been amended beyond that. So it's very complicated relationship between the two codes. Um, what is your recommendation? Any change could be done wholesale. It would have to be done on a line by line basis. Okay, which just hasn't been done yet. So, um, so our options here for, uh, I mean, do we do we take a motion or we don't need to make a motion? I don't think you need to have a motion, but I and staff, the council staff, we would need uh, a recommendation at least. A direction what we need what what we have to do with that keep it as is or work on it or 
I'd rather the full council make that decision, um, unless Tony or Corey disagree. I agree with you, so we can look at this. People have a history of this. I'll, I'll get some information from the past chair of the tag. This this looks like, to, to me, it just looks problematic, but again, I'm new. Okay. So, so yeah, Ted, could we do that? Um, have the full council make a recommendation to staff? So what, what are the options? Uh, uh, keep the existing amendments? Or... Yes, for now, yeah, we would keep them. Um, What's the, uh, would the plumbing tag not, why wouldn't the plumbing tag be heavily involved in this portion prior to it getting to us or the council? Is there a plumbing tag or just a mechanical that the plumbing fits into? There yeah, is. A probably know that. There's a plumbing tag, yeah. yeah. Thank you, you're right. My understanding is the building goes first. And so, and I think part of what Krista was saying is the, I don't know, the way that they design and, and, and there are rules for how many fixtures of what kind need to be, say, in a bathroom, right? How many lavatories, those kind of things. And they want those rules in the building code. And so that's why part of this is in here, I think. But if it conflicts with the UPC in Washington State, you would have those issues. And I think that's why she was saying it must be a very complicated relationship. If those things are existing, then this complicated relationship is already pre-existing and we'll, I'll find my way through it. And again, I knew this will be my first tag this year after we're done with these. So Corey, is that a motion then to uh, leave the amendments? <laughs> it sounded like. These, all these emotion, all this verbiage is already existing, right, Stoyan? Uh, well, what you see here in the blue, these are recommendations from uh, the TAC. And uh, uh, currently we have the chapter 29 as it is. So uh, uh, the staff didn't get a recommendation to amend it or to uh, uh, keep it. It just with these notes that, you know, suggestions that we may want to work on it but there wasn't a direct uh, uh recommendation what what we need to stick with what would the plumbing tags role be if the recommendations were approved and then they found something that was um in conflict of, are they able to come back and and then make that change that that's my concern is we is if we make a, if we move to adopt the recommended changes, does that tie the hands of the plumbing tag? The two groups were set up so there would be an opportunity to correlate between codes um, while doing the group two codes. So the intent is that we would be able to go back and correlate any changes that needed to be made between the codes. Okay. Right. Okay. In group, two, in group two, uh, we will be working on the structural portion of the uh, IBC. So there is time. Uh, the IBC won't be adopted. So there will be time that uh, uh, we can go back and uh, coordinate uh, with the decision made by the plumbing code. Act. I, I know Micah has his hand up, but it would be my recommendation that if during the group two that if if planning and building are going to work together and they have the freedom to make those changes together it would be my recommendation and Corey, i don't know if you agree with this i don't want to step on your toes but it would be my recommendation that any modifications go through the plumbing and then work with building to make the changes together i like that and then I, you've got a couple of jeds in here too and he's been around so there's a couple of people who want to talk yeah micah and then jed or is yours. Thank you. Let me have a moment. Um, the, the recommendations on the report actually are taking two sections of language and putting them back in the table, which I don't believe is necessary. When you're talking about kitchen sinks for dwelling units, the other column in the table was completely deleted. 
And so you'd be putting back that entire column in just to say that kitchen sinks are required in dwelling units. I, I don't believe that's necessary. I think that's why the language in the amendment is actually there. They, they work together. In other words, that entire column was stricken. So I, I don't know if you can show that. Um, it, it's, not, it's not shown in the WAC, uh, but there is a, a last column on the table that says other, and it only covers more or less sinks. And the only sink that is required is a kitchen sink in the dwelling unit, and that's where the language comes in in 2902.6 or somewhere down in that neighborhood. So I think they correlate together already among the other – the same one thing with the drinking fountains. We have different requirements for that than what is in the table, and so it was easier to strike all that language as well and not incorporate that in the entire table. Let's just put it in the – sections that it applies to and so that's why the language is there so the table and the code language actually work together um, and then i can't remember we also add the occupancy classifications which are not in the plumbing code table on, in the uniform plumbing code so those are very in my opinion very important items especially the occupancy classification but again we're pretty much eliminating two entire columns of that table and putting it in a few minor worded code sections. So, um, yeah, I hear this doesn't show the entire table either, unfortunately. I guess just to so, be clear, I, what would your recommendation therefore be? Would be to maintain the table as currently amended and maintain the sections as currently amended. All right, thank you. Jed? Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's Jed Sherman with the IATMO Group. Um, if I can offer maybe some historical perspective, I think these two issues are related but separate, separate but related. The, uh, in the Washington Code, the number of fixtures and minimum fixture requirements that table has come from the ICC, and then Washington has amended it. That's one, that's one piece of it. Then the other piece is all the plumbing requirements in the state of Washington come from the Uniform Code. So any plumbing requirements, specific plumbing requirements in the building code or in the residential code are completely expunged. And it is the, the uniform plumbing code that does all the plumbing requirements. So you have the fixture minimum requirements that come from ICC as amended by the state of Washington. And then you have the plumbing requirements that come from the uniform plumbing code. And it's, it's my estimation that that has worked. You know, it may be somewhat complicated as Krista has suggested, but it's also worked efficiently and effectively, and it's kept all the plumbing requirements from the uniform code so that there's no confusion. So to be clear, your recommendation as well would be to keep the state amount. Uh, as, as far as I know, it's worked, it's worked up until now, so I'm not aware of any problems. Right. Thank you. Any further discussion? So Tony, I don't think you necessarily, you made a recommendation. You didn't make a motion. That's correct. Uh, I, I did not. Based on um, Jed and, and Micah's comments and everyone else's and Krista's, thank you for that. I feel like I understand it a little better now. Um, I would make a motion to uh, keep the, um, the section as amended by Washington State now with no modifications. Second. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. And that will probably be the case, you know, for all of the chapter 29 issues. Um, uh, there are a few two, I think, exceptions in chapter 29 that are model code exceptions to sections that we adopt. Uh, I will keep the exceptions there. Uh, I, I think I evaluated the exceptions. I didn't see a conflict with the uniform plumbing code, uh, but I will uh, color code the exceptions so the, the uh, council and the public later uh, when we post the CR 102 for public comment so the, the, the public will be able to identify the changes. So we, we, we will get some uh, feedback from that. All right, thank you. 
any other individual items? We uh, didn't, yesterday we didn't discuss uh, chapter 30 to 35, but I don't think I have uh, uh, anything important there. All right, let's see. Uh, see, John, Sue had pointed out item 74 and 80. Did, the, did we act on those? 74 and 80 from uh, the uh, uh, proposals log? Um, yeah, I guess those would be proposals. Yeah, it wouldn't be. A... John, can you show those? I stopped sharing. Yeah, which one? 80? 74 and 80. Did we have motions to make on those or? Uh... I thought you did that in the last committee meeting. Yeah, I thought so as well. Okay. I think so too, yeah. Okay. I just didn't want to miss anything. Um, and then did anyone want to pull up um, any individual um, uh, state amendments that were on that list there that we did not individually discuss? Otherwise, um, I would take a motion to uh, take all the remaining ones and move forward with the tag recommendations. So I'll give folks uh, a couple seconds if, if you'd like to bring any individual ones up. So, so move. Okay. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? And all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion passes. All right, on to IFC. Okay, so for the IFC, um, <clears throat> we only have two items to bring forward today that were not included in the last uh, push that we did. So. We have log numbers uh, 64 and 55, if you want to pull those up. I'll just do a brief overview of each. So if we go to 64. And Ray, did you want to drive? I don't have the document pulled up right now. If you need help and if something work. comes up, I'll take over. But I don't, have, I don't have it pulled up right now unless you want me to. And I have no problem doing that. No, no worries. I can do it. So this was brought forward um, kind of as a chapter as a whole to give the opportunity to the TAG to uh, just review, do a review of everything and um, make sure that there wasn't anything we want changed. In the end, really, the only thing we changed was 918.5. So if you scroll down to... You said 918.5? Yes, sir. All right, so 918.5, the exception. Um, we just crossed out, it's just some clerical stuff. We just crossed out that last section. It really didn't make uh, anything terribly significant. We don't have to dive into it unless um, Chair wants to or um, Corey. And then outside of that, the other log we worked on was um, 055, which was the chapter uh, 33 for the um, safeguards during construction. Tony, can I clarify one thing in case there's yeah. any questions? On this, on this proposal, you'll notice that there's a lot of red strikeout. And the only reason that they are red and struck out is because they are already state amendments. We're keeping those state amendments. They're not being deleted. They're just, this is that 918.5 is the only thing that we're changing. Um, when the proposal was brought in, it was brought over with all the state amendments and we didn't need to put them in this current proposal. So I just wanted to clarify that we weren't deleting those amendments in this uh, in this proposal. Thanks, Ray. Okay, so John, if you're able to pull up the um, log 055, the chapter 33. It's 055? Yes. So this is the uh, fire safety during construction and demolition. And <clears throat> the recommendation that was brought forward in this proposal was that the 20 
um, 21 cycle had a significant amount of additions and changes to chapter 33. Because of that, um, there, it, the, the chapter was a little clunky as far as navigation. And so they reordered all of it in the 20, there's a proposal in the, uh, for the 2024 that's going through that um, basically fixes the layout of that chapter. And this proposal is to take that new layout that's easier to navigate um, then the 2021 and to adopt that so we're out ahead of it. And then once the 2024 cycle comes through, we should be able to strike this, this chapter pretty much and then just go with the model. But this would be consistent with the 2024 that makes it easier to navigate, that includes all of the significant changes in the 21. Um, met with uh, Shamim on this, who was on the um, part of the process at the national level. And we went through the, the chapter together and um, reviewed it for anything that would affect us directly at the state level. And really it resulted in one change, which was one strikeout. I think it's, um, I don't remember the number. And if you scroll up there, John, I think you already passed it. It'll be an exception, John. It'll be the only thing in red. Yeah, there it is right there, okay. So 3303.5, the fire watch where required by the fire code official uh, or the safe, site safety plan established in accordance with 33031, a fire watch shall be provided for building demolition and for building construction. The exceptions, which were under 33035, were new construction that is built under the IRC. And then we also had a, uh, an exception that existed previously that talked about the um, the 50,000 square foot per story. And I believe it was, let's see, I have it right here. And less than five stories is what it said. But they added the 50,000 square feet per story to the model language. And so we felt it was okay to get rid of the five story requirement and then um, just keep the new construction that is built under the IRC. And we put that under the charging language. We felt like that was a better spot for it than 3305. 351. So that's the only change we made. But this is a significant rework to the layout of the chapter that's proposed in the 2021. And that's the largest difference. And so by adopting it, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, Ray, but it's my understanding that basically 33 would be struck and the Washington State Amendment would be this with the new layout from the 2024. And so it is a significant change, but it doesn't change the context of the 2021, it's just the layout. And we're just getting out ahead of that. What this does for the um, for the building code portion, uh, I don't know if it's best to push this to council and have council um, you, you know, act on it as far as making it match up to the IBC, uh, but that's kind of where we're at and that's what was pushed forward today. Thank you, Tony. Any questions or discussion? This is one of the sections in the chapters that uh, were modified after uh, we completed the IBC tag. So the IBC tag uh, never uh, discussed this. Uh, we, we, we need to coordinate, but it was never discussed. Thanks for the clarification. I mean, it's mostly uh, probably mostly dealing with uh you know the fire side of things as opposed to the building official anyway so i would i would uh um defer to, to tony's expertise there I any other I'm sorry. go ahead tony i'm sorry sure if i may just real quick I, I think the best thing to do would be to um push it forward to the council and have um and have council discuss the the option of, of marrying up the two as far as IFC IBC, but I also don't want to <clears throat> take away from any thing that the building take could provide. And so, if there is a recommendation to have it go through the building take, I'm not against that, um, but it would be my recommendation to push it to council. Okay. Um, any any further discussion before Tony turns his recommendation into a, uh, a motion? So this is Micah, if you don't mind. The the item on the screen that says the exception for new construction, does that mean you would be requiring a fire watch for residential demolition? 
Oh, good question. Tony? I think the square footage and the floor, the floor area and stuff would cover where probably, I don't see a residential structure being that large at any time is what we talked about. I guess, I guess to answer your question, question for my reading of it it gives the fire code official the uh the authority to require a fire watch during irc demo yeah it would i don't remember to be honest and, and correct me if i'm wrong and i know we have a couple of tag members here as well that were in the discussion when we moved the exception to the charging language at 33035 instead of leaving it under 51, did we discuss the demolition portion as the tag? I don't, I don't specifically recall that. I, I don't think that we did. We left it up a lot, um, that first sentence. Um, we, we really focused on the first sentence really hard, where required by the fire code official um, to, give, to not take any authority away from him to uh, allow or disallow something. Okay. So Mike, it sounds like that was by design. Any okay. other, any other discussion questions? So Dave Kokavi did not finish. We did not discuss demo, but this looks like it would be covered if desired. Yes, that's, I would agree with Dave's assessment that if, you know, it gives the fire code official the authority. So, you know, Bainbridge Island may have some some houses big enough that it would make sense. But they're probably far enough away from anything else, too, that if, if they catch on fire, it's not a big deal. Um, any further discussion? Um, Tony, did you want to turn your recommendation into a motion? Yeah. Am I okay to, to just make the, the motion one motion for both logs 64 and 55? Yep. Okay, I'd like to uh, make a motion to push the log numbers 64 and 55 as proposed today to the State Building Code Council. All right, Second. Thank, you. thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? And motion passes. Okay. Perfect. So I think we are on to Dave, your uh, request there. Um, uh, we, uh, Andrew, Andrew, uh, I'm sorry to cut you off. Um, yep. We have the electric vehicle proposals. Uh, I hope it won't. Oh, take, okay. It won't take us four hours again. But uh, oh. it was discussed at the TAC meeting. Uh, the the TAC recommended some modifications. I did make some modifications. I have uh, uh, some. Um, edits uh, provided by uh, Rod much and I will show those uh, but we uh, need to discuss this uh, at this level okay John can you can you let me share my screen okay thanks uh, So I will start with the the statute, uh, uh, which is a requirement in RCW. It was uh, enacted with the HB uh, twelve eighty seven, and I am showing this because there were many questions of why we are uh, going above what was required by the statute. Well, the statute specifically states that the rules adopted under this section must exceed the specific minimum requirements established under subsection two, the requirements in subsection two are the requirements that we just adopted in section 429. Uh, they became effective uh, August 29 or something, uh, end of August. So uh, this, is, this is the main uh, uh, requirement here in the statute. And the other one is the residential R3 got repealed. Uh, there were several conversations, discussions, complaints, uh, R3 versus uh, one and two family dwellings. We reached out to the Senate. We got an email from the Senator that proposed this change on the Senate floor. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to comment on this because again, it was changed with a, a striker on the Senate floor. 
uh, and uh, our attorney and I uh, listened to the uh, discussions on the Senate floor and the discussions were all related to one and two family dwellings. So the senator who proposed the modification was, uh, she, she said the intent was to address one and two family dwellings and the discussion on the Senate floor was about one and two family dwellings. Uh, it is based on our research again, and we coordinate it with uh, uh, the uh, Assistant Attorney General. Uh, and uh, we had a long four hour uh, discussion at the last uh, attack meeting. And uh, uh, I worked on this language. Uh, there is also another proposal. It was currently 196, uh, it was submitted as 196. The attack rejected it uh, and the proponent just Kathleen, she just sent me a, a, a new version of it. So it's not on the website, but I'm, I'm uh, willing to uh, show it uh, for discussion purposes. So here is, here is what I have. Again, I made a few changes. And also I have wrote uh, suggestions and I didn't add his edits here and I can explain why I didn't add the cable to the listed raceway. Uh, so uh, uh, he's here so he can explain what his idea is, uh, idea is. Uh, but uh, based on his uh, uh, comment, residential specialty electricians are permi permitted by their license to install non-metallic sheeted cable. This is the yellow Romex that we, we all have seen in dwellings, but are not permitted to install conduit systems. Cable is allowed by NEC for supply of EV charging equipment. So these are the changes that he proposed and I uh, disagreed with the cable. And uh, I will leave this for uh, a discussion. And if I need, I will add this, but for the cable, uh, if I add the cable next to the raceway, it changes the idea you know, you have a raceway or you, you, you have a complete uh, branch circuit. So the raceway is not a, a, a raceway uh, system. It's just the raceway that is installed, the pipe. It's not uh, the, uh, the raceway that is required for uh, some occupancies, for example, for commercial buildings. Uh, but again, uh, uh, Roth is here. He can uh, provide more uh, details on that. Uh, here is the proposal as modified after the TAC meeting. And uh, I'm here to answer uh, uh, your questions. So I'd like some uh, comments about my proposals. Yep, go ahead, Ron. So uh, as, can you put those up, Stoyan? Yes, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm working on it right here. So as far as uh, one and two family dwellings, residential uh, occupancies, those are typically wired by residential specialty electricians. And they are limited in their license uh, allowance to installing non-metallic sheet cable. They, they can't install uh, conduit. Uh, that would have to be done by general O1 electricians to go into a, a residence and install a conduit uh, for this. So, you know, a, a spare uh, Romex to from the electrical panel to a location for a future piece of equipment is a very common installation uh, by electricians. They would pull a, a spare cable out to a location for a future hot tub, for example. And so that's what I was trying to accomplish here is allowing the electric vehicle charging equipment uh, for future uh, in lieu of the raceway to be uh, a cable in that uh, location uh, rather than a raceway. This would allow the residential electricians to install it. And that's, that's what it was about. All right, thank you, Rod. Just to be clear, we are, so this, 
you took the language that the tag approved and made these changes to it, or are you working off of, um, a, a, there was also another proposal. He was working on the old language, but the idea is that uh, instead uh, he was adding uh, ray, uh, the cable to the raceway. Uh, so it doesn't make any uh, difference if, if he worked on the old language or the new one. It's, the idea is the same. Uh, and uh, what he's saying, I agree with. The, the, the issue I was having is that we require the uh, branch circuit. So which will be most likely will be the Romex. And we are allowing the conduit as something that is easier to install. If it's not easier to install and it will cost more money, so we better uh, instead adding the raceway to the cable because here is the cable in the first sentence. Uh, uh, even it's, if, if it's, not, it's not stated, but this is what the meaning behind it is. So if, if this is the case, then we better just eliminate this part of, you know, just don't say anything about the conduit. So the idea was uh, the raceway is right here. I mean, the, the uh, branch circuit is like right here and the raceway is something that is easier to install and less expensive. But again, if, if this is the case, uh, we better uh, uh, remove the raceway. So this, this, is, my, this is my know. issue with the cable, not that I didn't, yeah. agree, uh, didn't agree with Rod. Yeah, I think I think I see what you're saying, Stoyan. Uh, a branch circuit, by definition, is is the uh, it, it would be the circuit and the uh, overcurrent device terminated at an outlet, and so I would. I guess I'm not sure what the intent of this section is. Are we are we going to require the electric vehicle, vehicle charger receptacle to be installed, or we we require the receptacle or EV charging equipment or just a junction box with a with a a, a, a cover? Okay. And uh, the the service uh, uh, panel. Uh, we require the capacity to install the, uh, the branch circuit and we require the space reserved without the, the breakers. But uh, I mean, if the space is reserved, the breakers can be installed, I think. Right. So, okay. I think, I think I see what you're saying now, because you're considering that the branch circuit in the first sentence could be the cable. Yes, so the branch circuit in the first sentence is completely done. Everything is done, including the breakers. It's a, you, you can use it. And the raceway is option two that, again, the, the assumption was it's less uh, uh, expensive. So you can install the, the, the raceway and later you can pull the, the Romex and, and have the complete branch circuit. That yeah. was the idea. That's but fine. I if it doesn't work with the raceway, then we better, instead of adding the cable to the raceway, we better take it out. Well, in most cases, you're not going to have a raceway because, the, like I said, the residential electricians aren't going to run the conduit. Um, but the branch circuit would cover what I was trying to accomplish with the cable. All right, so just so I'm clear, sometimes it's a little slow. Um, you would like to, uh, you know, make these changes as shown in blue and have that uh, sentence that was highlighted uh, by Stoyan deleted structure. That uh, I guess the conversation is that if we have the if we require the dedicated branch circuit, so this includes the cable that that Rod is talking about, right? Is it? Yes. Uh, okay, so the question now is, should we provide, should we keep the listed raceway as another option, knowing that uh, uh, a residential electrician won't be able to install it? Well, it's already an option, even if you delete that sentence, right? Um, Which so one? Branch circuit and the raceway or cable. So you've got the option there, the raceway or cable. The, the cable the cable is included right here. It's not stated, but it's included right here because you can't have a complete branch circuit without the cable there. 
uh, and uh, this is the second option for the listed raceway. You don't need the cable because it's not a complete uh, branch circuit. You have just the uh, infrastructure for it. Okay. So, well, uh, leaving the cable there would allow a spare cable to be installed without the breaker. Uh, okay. Can we? Clarify then, like, can we say, is it a common term if we say the spare cable? Something to clarify that you don't need to connect it? You could you could use spare cable. Sure, that would work. A listed raceway or spare cable. Because that's a pretty common way to... to provide for a future piece of equipment is to install a spare cable uh, to the panel. Okay, well, I, I, if it's clear, I don't have problems with it. If the committee decides to do it this way, I can, I can easily change it. Okay. Any further discussion? I do have one, one question on this and um, <laughs> I'm confident that those that have spoken on this have a far better understanding than myself. One thing that um, I am a little concerned about or have some questions about, at, at first I was hearing that this opens up more options for industry, and, but then I'm also hearing now that it sounds like it restricts what some people can do and can't depending on the licensing they have. Is that correct, Rod? Yes, all I was trying to accomplish was to allow the residential electricians to do this work. Uh, if if the uh, option, the only option for a spare was a was a conduit, they wouldn't be able to do that. They, they'd have to have an O1 electrician to do that. Okay, so and out of to, curiosity, to that would help. sorry, Ryan, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Go ahead. No, I, that's all I was saying. Okay. Spare okay. cable would just provide another option for those residential electricians to do the work. Got it. Okay. And then at the TAG level, was this specific item on um, the agenda? Have we heard from industry at all on this, if, if this is going to cause issues or an uproar? That's, that's my only concern with the licensing stuff, but it sounds to me like it makes it, it gives it more options. And if that's the case, then yeah, I, don't, I see that as a good thing. We had, we had uh, more than four hours uh, discussion on this proposal and uh, the, uh, the cable is uh, new. Uh, so the cable uh, was never discussed. Okay, thank you. Any, any other comments or discussion? And uh, so this uh, is the other one that uh, was uh, suggested again. I, I I didn't include it in my uh, 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 in my proposal because um, I, I I wasn't sure. Um, so the electrical room, uh, personally, I don't like uh, using the term. And and uh, again, not not the managing director talking. I I'm an electrical engineer by diploma, not by knowledge. But I I, I know a little bit about it. So I. You know, electrical room can be uh, uh, interpreted differently. It was my concern, but I used it because it was uh, uh, in the uh, house bill and it was in the existing language. And uh, what is added to it in the blue color makes sense to me, but uh, uh, I've I've never worked in Washington before, and there are some differences between, again, labor and industries, the enforce, being the enforcement authority. So I wanted to have this for discussion. But it's only in mm -hmm. these huge industrial applications. And as I understand it- Anyone have any oh, comments? Sure. Yeah, the reason, the reason I wanted to add this is lots, lots of buildings do not have electrical rooms, dedicated electrical rooms. There, there, are, there is a service uh, equipment area sometimes sometimes it's in a, a dedicated electrical room uh, also the uh, 
there are lots of buildings where the electric vehicle charging uh, service equipment is outdoors, a totally, completely separate service and feeder panels uh, located on an equipment pad outdoors. And so this would just provide the option rather than providing uh, space in an electrical room that, that may not be used because the EV charging equipment is going to be located completely outdoors, it would just give that option to do that. I would, I would use uh, uh, service, electrical service panels or, or uh, sub panels or feeders, whatever uh, it's, it's more appropriate. Uh, uh, and I wasn't sure uh, how it would be accepted. So uh, does it make more sense if we use the service panel, uh, the electrical panel? Because, you know, whatever we have, it will start from the electrical panel anyway. Uh, how, how about saying rather than electrical rooms, say uh, electrical service and well, or I'm just trying to think on the go here. Well, for, for single family, for so single down family. Here, electrical service slash panel capacity um, and the electrical system. So maybe we don't need the stuff up top here. Uh, you know. but go, go ahead, Stoyan, I cut you off. For single family dwelling, you have the main service and you may have a, a, a sub panel, uh, you know, in the garage or uh, in the laundry room, whatever. So it's a typical installation. For multi family, uh, you will have the, the, you know, with big development, uh, uh, you will have the transformer, you will have the, the, the service, uh, uh, the, the main, it's no longer a panel, it's a bigger equipment, but we can call it a panel. And then you will have the, the feeders or the or the sub panels, uh, and I don't know how to. What is the better option to say it? You know, uh, that will be understandable for everybody. And uh, Rod will be a good help for this one because. Uh, what about saying instead of electrical room, say electrical room or area? I mean, that would cover pretty much the place where the service equipment and panels are. Yeah, I like that. What do you think, Stoyan? And then Michael will get to you after Stoyan weighs in. Uh, well, the requirement, the requirement is for, uh, we need the capacity and we need the capacity of the electrical system. And, uh, it's not that I'm against it, but my concern is that if we say electrical room uh, or area, some folks may consider this the room and area uh, uh, itself, not the capacity of the system. So what, what, what I needed and what I didn't find the answer for it is how to say it with less words uh, uh, clearly to say, okay, we are talking about the capacity of the electrical system. Well, we've got that if you go down to the next sentence, the electrical service slash panel capacity and the electrical system shall have sufficient capacity. So I think it, uh, Yeah, I think you're right. I think the capacity is addressed in the second sentence. The first sentence is talking about the size to accommodate. So you okay, can... Chair. Micah was in the conversation. We had, I was in a couple of those meetings. They lasted a long time about this particular paragraph. So uh, Micah has his hand raised. And what it says, yeah. I read his reason. Thank you, Corey. Go ahead, Micah. I'm going to try not to gum up the works this meeting. So I know every time I get to talk to you on this one, it seems we go for hours. However, I really think that we, this is going beyond. I understand Stoyan talked to the people that got this through and what the intent was. But again, I don't think the proper folks have been involved in development of this. I think this goes beyond what the SBCC members should be pushing. 
I think it should go to a subcommittee. Um, maybe this full council develops that subcommittee with the appropriate folks involved. I, you know, I know Rod is on here and I don't think they've been involved all the way through and I think they should be um, among other organizations, including some um, state building code council representatives for those various organizations, whether it's residential or construction uh, or commercial construction. Um, we don't have to rush this through. The legislation says this needs to be implemented by July 1 of 2024. And so I really think that the continuing discussion of this in the tag level and, you know, not having clear direction from the state building code council as a full body is, is just not the direction we should be going. Um, and I've said this every time I sound like a broken record. I know, I know we need to get something in here that clarifies this, but I just believe that it should not be the tag members or the state building code council developing the actual language as a whole. I think it should be a subcommittee, and I think we have plenty of time to do that. Because um, I, I, there's my two cents. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Micah. And if we do move it forward, um, you know, please bring it up tomorrow too, um, you know, as the same recommendation. Any other comments or questions? Just for for Micah, uh, I mean, I I, I I was the dead horse uh, the last time, and I was prepared for this time too. Uh, uh, and uh, I always appreciate his uh, comments. It's not that I uh, I'm against what what he said. Uh, uh, so I was tasked to develop this, and I did. Uh, I included many people, some officially, some unofficially. Um, I sent it to different entities. And uh, this is what I ended up with. Uh, the the uh, if the council decides to table it, I'm okay either way. I was trying to help. So this proposal won't be uh, uh, a proposal coming from the council. Uh, the council staff did it, but uh, uh, I was tasked with it, and I, I I was trying to help. Okay. Uh, the other the other uh, concern I have is uh, money. What happened was when we got the initial bill uh, and we had the analysis, the bill analysis, and we, we discussed this uh, uh, several times uh, uh, when uh, during the, the legislative sh session, uh, we didn't ask for more money for this, uh, for implementing this bill because our intent was we will be able to complete it uh, uh, during the regular rulemaking cycle. Uh, so now we are uh, uh, during the rulemaking cycle, uh, we are two months behind and then we'll have group two and we have other uh, 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 legal issues that I don't want to talk about that may additionally slow down the process. So uh, uh, the effective date is July 1st, 2024. I agree with that. But uh, when the council uh, and this committee makes the decisions, uh, uh, these uh, uh, time limitations uh, uh, and, and everything that I said need, need to be taken into account. So again, I'm not pushing for anything. I just want everything to be uh, uh, discussed when, when uh, we uh, are talking about uh, a decision related to electric vehicles. Thank you. And so is, I have I was going to say, I appreciate all your hard work on this story as well. I know there's a lot to it, and um, I'm sorry you're the dead horse. <laughs> oh, no, no, it, it, uh, I, I will go with the direction wherever you say. I, I, no hard feelings, so don't. Any other? No, I, go ahead, Micah. I was going to say, we do need to work on this code development, for sure. So, somehow, some way, but I think it should be a, a much more broad work group um, that is directed by the SBCC council members and not have to be SBCC staff working on it. So, um, yeah, I know we'll get it through and get something done. But, I, I, you know, we every meeting, we bring up more and more items and we poke more and more holes in this. And, and that's why I think it should be under some type of subcommittee, ad hoc committee, something else because of all those issues. So, thanks. Thank you, Micah. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Stoyan, I was just going to ask, can you can you ask for 
appropriations or funds um, in the next budget cycle for this, not, not knowing, you, you didn't know what, this has a ton of problems associated with it, just the infrastructure part of it. Conduits run that don't necessarily have to have wires put in them, how much room they talked about. I'm not an electrician, but there's devices that monitor how much power is being used so they can maybe use less. Um, well, you're talking about the load management system. I have everything. Yeah, the, yeah. There's the load management system. Uh, the uh, appropriation, uh, well, I'm asking for more authority to spend. I, I, I don't know if this is the right, the right uh, uh, venue to discuss this, but I'm asking for more authority to spend because uh, we are struggling with uh, 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 the energy code. We have too many proposals related to the energy code. Uh, and we can't keep up with all this work for the energy code. And uh, what I'm asking is we'll cap out my limit uh, so it should be uh, 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 another uh, uh, issue. So uh, we'll try to do our best. And uh, if, if the decision is to go off cycle uh, uh, rule, uh, we'll try to do our best, but uh, this is where we are. I was just sharing the information. Thank you, Stan. You. you know, I, I'd have to disagree with you, Corey. I don't, you know, it seems, pretty benign as far as following the uh, what the legislature tasked us with um, and their intent. Um, so it seems pretty straightforward to me. So that, that's just my two cents. Michael, your hand is still up. Do you, do you mean it to be? Yeah, sorry. I did want to come back in and ask one more question of Stoyan in it has to do related to the cost of this code change. Although this is not an energy code proposal, um, it the kind of the intent of this legislation and, and kind of the background of it is energy related. So does it need to be included in that cost analysis that is specific to the energy code and energy code change implementation type stuff? Um, for, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> for, for, the, for, the, for the energy code, uh, I'm asking for uh, 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 another position that won't be a code specialist, but uh, uh, again, I don't know if this is the right venue to discuss this, but uh, it's not a secret either. So I'm asking for another position. I was going to share this information with the council tomorrow. I'm asking for another position, program specialist, and the program specialist will be able to help Krista uh, with the energy code. And the energy code is not only the code proposal, the energy code requires some uh, 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 additional uh, uh, work. And in addition to that, we have a statutory mandate uh, requiring us to uh, uh, sign a contract with a third party. Uh, and uh, the contract is for uh, economic analysis and uh, code proposals. And we've never done it before. So uh, 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 there will be a need for additional funds for that too. Micah, I okay. would say no, it's not included here because A, it's in the building code, not the energy code, and B, um, it doesn't save energy. It, it you know, uses energy. So that, that's sure, and my, I guess that's my question is who is going to be doing the cost analysis for this code change proposal? Because it's still going to be a code change proposal. Well, it's, it's a requirement for the council to do that. It's the same as any other uh, code change proposal. We have the proponents uh, 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 cost benefit analysis, uh, but it doesn't mean all these cost benefit analysis are accurate and, and, and uh, good to use. Krista wants to say something. Uh, statutory mandates are exempt from the cost benefit analysis as well, so. Oh, oh okay, yeah, so yeah, thank you. Uh, talking about money wasn't about the cost benefit analysis for this specific proposal. It was about uh, our uh, time uh, uh, and uh, of course time is, is money. What happened with this bill was uh, I started in December last year and I got the bill in, in January uh, or, or February, uh, uh, mid-February. And when I was doing the analysis, uh, the recommendation I got, okay, it's a, a, a July 1st, 2024, we can uh, fit it in into the, uh, uh, into the current rulemaking. Uh, keep in mind that when I was doing the analysis, this R3 exception was still there. 
So there wasn't uh, that proposal wasn't didn't seem big of a deal, being a big of a deal. Well, with the R3 exception going away, well, it changed the game, but the initial uh, uh, fiscal note was uh, uh, saying that we don't need additional funds. So uh, again, I don't know if these details are important right now, but uh, I, I felt obligated to share this, uh, this information. Thank you, Micah. Based on Chris's comment on the cost benefit analysis not being required, if we are going significantly above and beyond the legislation, which is we've all agreed we're doing here, does that not require a cost benefit analysis at that point? Um, I mean, I understand maybe we don't need it for the items that are identified in the legislation, but we are going way outside the actual legislation. I mean, I understand the intent of the legislation, but the intent, the legislation states are threes, but now we're going to apply this to all one and two family dwellings and townhouses. And to me, that is outside the legislation. And so that would need a cost to benefit analysis, at least in my opinion, and maybe the public's opinion as well. And maybe that's something that we need to ask Dirk at the next meeting. The, yeah, that could be, uh, you know, I would disagree that we're going above and beyond the legislation. I, you know, it, it was debated, you know, some, it was my opinion, uh, I got overruled uh, in the democracy vote, but it was my opinion that um, anything that falls into the IRC is in R3, um, you know, it's not separate. So I, I think it can be interpreted that way as well so i i disagree that we're going above what we were tasked to do but but that yeah andrew i'm, I'm going to say there's going to be a whole lot of code officials that will disagree with you on everything in the residential code being an r3 there's no occupancy classifications in the residential code whatsoever this proposal doesn't talk about occupancy classification and i intentionally did it this way because i knew we'll we'll get stuck with this conversation uh, this proposal talks about type of construction. So one and two family dwellings and townhouses are in one section and everything else is in another section. My uh, logic behind it is that it doesn't go above and beyond the, what we uh, are required by HB 1287. If the council decides the other way, <clears throat> uh, it will go the other way. So if the council decides, okay, the bill, the language, the specific language in the bill uh, uh, talks about R3 and R3 is in the uh, building code. Uh, this is what the council is about. The council discuss and make the decisions. I don't, I'm not making the decisions, but the logic behind this proposal is this is what we are required to do. And, and, and this is uh, the way I see the, uh, uh, the proposal again. Not the managing director talking, I'm just trying to help. Yeah. And, and I agree with that. We're doing what we were tasked with. And, and uh, regarding going above and beyond, uh, when we were discussing this proposal, uh, the four hours discussion, uh, we agreed to add uh, a few exceptions. And uh, this is the one that, uh, this is a new uh, uh, a modified version of the bill that was discussed. Uh, because in the initial bill, there wasn't an exception for group A, group E, and group M. The initial bill was for all, and this is above and beyond, okay? But now with this, we are providing two options, okay? The same, uh, the same number one, uh, option one uh, is the same as it is now required. There is an exception uh, for all group A, E, and M occupancies, except for designated employee parking spaces. And because with the designated employee parking spaces, there was an issue with enforcement, because when you get the plans, you don't have designated uh, employee parking spaces. So here is the other option, uh, which uh, Krista helped on that uh, language. Uh, one in 200 uh, parking spaces, which is 0.5% as it was discussed at the TAC meeting. So I don't, I don't know if it goes above and beyond. And for the one and two family dwellings, of course, there are different opinions on R3 versus one and two family dwellings. Uh, the decision shouldn't be mine. Thank you, Stoyan. 
any additional uh, discussion? So Tony, uh, Corey, what are your thoughts? I hope that you two can agree so I don't have to vote. But my personal thought is that it's done, it's clean, um, and it's what we've been tasked to do. I tend to agree with you after the, having the conversation. I just know this was particularly, there was a lot of problems, a lot of just discussion about it because it's got so much new stuff. So uh, if you're good with it, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. My only comment, um, Stoyan, if you can go up a little to where we've got the blue text. Oh, the blue text, the blue text. Uh, um, I, I don't hear it. On the, the blue text is right here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would, you know, for uh, 4.3 down there at the bottom, um, I would just leave that as electrical room since it's just a title, you know, and then, you know, you can change, um, you know, electrical equipment spaces on the inside, but I, I don't, I, I think we should leave that as short as possible. Okay. That's, that's my only comment. Yes. So. Or you want to make a motion and you don't have to agree with me on that either. Um, you can make your very own motion. <laughs> the motion is to take this section and move it forward to the council. Mm -hmm. I'll make that motion. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Any uh, further discussion? Yeah, just real quick. I'm moving this forward to council to um, adopt as is. What other, how many opportunities will be given for for industry to speak out on this? So, well, I mean, the council could always table it, send it back. Um, I'm sure that Michael will ask tomorrow that it be sent back, uh, you know, in a uh, uh, um, committee, an ad hoc committee be formed to work on that. So that, that could happen. Um, if it does continue to move forward, um, industry would uh, be able to comment at the public hearings. I think those are next month, um, as well as tomorrow, um, they can speak. And, um, you know, I'm sure that there'll be lobbyists involved as well uh, as it goes to the legislature. I, I'm sure that the Home builders may have uh, something to say, but uh, Stoyan, uh, Krista, any anything I left out? If the meeting is successful tomorrow, uh, uh, the council will direct. Well, if the council directs staff to file the CR one hundred two, and this will be part of the proposal, will be posted, will uh, will be available for uh, public comments and testimony, and this will be about two months. And then we'll have two public hearings and then uh, 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 another council meeting before. Uh, so there is a time uh, for uh, the public and the business and uh, stakeholders uh, to uh, comment on this proposal. Okay, is we... Okay, all right. And we still have the option to talk about this tomorrow. And if the council decides, if if Micah is correct and it doesn't have to be implemented until 2024, we put it to a, a committee, we can do that too, right? The council can decide this, not us. Yes. yes. Uh, My motion stands. The, the, the council meeting tomorrow may be, uh, uh, looking for the right term to use, but will be a difficult meeting. So if we don't have time for this, we may, uh, table it for a special meeting or the meeting in October. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got a motion on the table. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, there's no one else. So, all right, motion passes. Mike, I'm sorry, I, I don't necessarily, uh, you know, I, yeah, I, I think it should be a council decision. So, I, I'm totally fine with that being a council decision. I, I, and like I said, I'm not 
opposed to some of this language. Matter of fact, I like most of it, but again, we're just putting, like I said in the chat, we're putting electrical requirements in the building code. And in the state of Washington, there's a significant number of jurisdictions that do not have authority over that. That would be the state. So. Well, there, we try not to put unenforceable things in the code, but there are some unenforceable things. Yeah. It'll just you be know, one I would more. Love to see this, you know, I would love to see this as its own separate um, whack rule and not actually in the building code, if that makes any sense, like we've done with other special items. Mm -hmm. So, all right, uh, Stoyan, are we ready to move on to the next agenda item or uh, anything else? We have, we have oh. one more. Uh, this uh, proposal, uh, uh, I, I don't know if uh, Kathleen is here or I don't even know if I'm saying her name right and I really apologize, I'm, I'm bad with names. I can't, sure. I can't even say my name. You did it great, Stoyan. <laughs> uh, so uh, she had a proposal, uh, I... Uh, was tasked to uh, evaluate her proposal. My intent, initial intent was to merge uh, both proposals, mine and, and hers. Uh, I decided not to because they were, uh, here, both proposals have different approach. So uh, her proposal is uh, uh, above and beyond what is required. Was This is how it was considered. Uh, it was, was rejected. Or tabled was it rejected? I think the last yeah. uh, the uh, the meeting rejected, and uh, she is using her opportunity to uh, uh, reintroduce it as amended. Uh, and uh, I got it uh, uh, this morning, so I didn't have time to post it on the website. But I promise to uh, have it on the screen uh, for discussion purposes. So here it is. Uh, here is the. Just a little more background so no one's views are tainted. Um, Kathleen did not have too much time, you know, by the, by the time we brought this up uh, to go through this. So it did not go through four hours of back and forth. So, um, you know, the fact that we voted it down was mostly because, you know, we found some issues in it and time ran out. So um, I don't want the tag recommendation to impact you know, your, your thoughts here. So go ahead, Kathleen Florzers. Uh, thank you both for the kind introduction uh, for the proposal. And um, it, so point of clarification, should I walk through it as basically a new proposal identifying the pieces that were, um, where the feedback was provided uh, or should I only speak to the feedback portions? Um, you know, why don't you, you know, go through all of it. Um, and then you can drill down and feedback. And you know, I was there, you know, at the tag meeting. But if uh, if Corey or uh, uh, sorry Tony have have any questions or members of the public, you know, we can go into that. Great, thank you very much. Um, so as the proposal begins, I added three new definitions, basically they are Stoyan's definitions, so, but it added clarification to the proposal, so included those here. Um, the proposal originally included new buildings and buildings following uh, that were substantially improved. Uh, feedback was provided that that would not be an appropriate term here, and so I removed that, and so the requirements will only apply to new buildings and parking lots and paved parking. Can, can you let me know where do you want me to move the, uh, so I can I can show particular sections if you if you can guide me, what do you want it to be shown? Sorry about that, so and yes, please. Um, right there is probably a good place. Um, let's see if there's anything else. No, if you can please uh, scroll down to um, table 427.2.1. Thank you. So I essentially merged these um, and removed the altered building uh, portions of each matrix, but it would require 10% of installed chargers, EVSE, uh, in the um, all spaces for non-residential and residential occupancies, excluding those that qualify for affordable housing. So 10% of EVSE with EV charger installed. And then um, you can see the percentages for EV, easy, EV ready parking. 
the percentages here are based on Washington state is currently a zero emission state, which will require 8% of all sales in 2025 to be EV uh, vehicles. We followed California's leadership on this. And California is currently considering 100% of sales by 2035. And I understand that Washington state will likely follow with that as well. So beginning with 10% of installed chargers at the time these buildings are constructed is really just gonna get us to that place where we will be meeting like the basic demand of, of sales that are reflected. And so please do consider that when, when, when looking at these numbers because they, they appear quite high as compared to uh, what the State Building Code Council is currently um, proposing. So R2 occupancies for affordable housing has been reduced. Of course, the demand is there and we don't want to eliminate vehicle purchase buying options for the residents, but there is also a very real situation where, you know, in particular the nonprofit affordable housing developers are barely squeaking by gathering enough funding just to cover base costs for a building. And, and you know, on a 75 unit building, this is gonna add another 300,000 um, in, in five, you know, just, you know, if we did this percentage of parking spaces. So it's, um, it, it, it's kind of a just a foot in the door. Um, and so, and if you can please scroll back up, Stoyan, to the definitions. Those definitions uh, have been revised. So there were some parameters in the original language, but they were more King County centric. And so um, these definitions reflect those that are in RCW 8414010 for new and rehabilitated multiple unit dwellings in urban centers. So it comes straight from the state language, uh, providing those parameters as to what affordable housing is defined as. Um, there was uh, also a, a table at the end, which basically um, identified how many vehicles could work off a certain amount of circuit amperage. Uh, that table has since been removed. It's more appropriate for the electrical code. Um, and so I believe those are the primary changes and goals of the language. You know, EV charging in 3% of non-residential buildings, uh, that's where 3% of the charging uh, points are at non-residential buildings. However, they're finding that 9% of the EV charging energy is coming from those. So 10%, again, in non-residential buildings is, is not unreasonable at this time. So- Kathleen, could you say that, that once again? That yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't say that very well, my apologies. So 3% of the charge points in the US, so nationwide, are at workplaces. You know, for both the those workers, those people utilizing those those businesses, but the actual charging energy that is being utilized, you know, across both residential and non-residential building, nine percent of that is coming from those charge points, those three percent of charge points. So, okay. it, it, more, yeah, more more charging is, is happening than we likely think at um, away from the home. So I believe, um, are, are there any other questions and uh, on the proposal? Do you have questions, comments? Um, Micah, your hand is up. You're gonna wear out that uh, that click button on your mouse. Welcome back. <laughs> I know, I think I say that at every meeting, like people get tired of hearing me talk and they're just gonna start tuning out. Um, I you always I have, have something have good questions. to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Um, Kathleen, on the table you're showing on the screen, or that uh, John is showing on the screen, you have a footnote there, but I don't see anywhere in the table that that footnote applies, and it seems contrary to what you're saying in the table. Is there a specific area of the table that footnote should apply? It is in the, uh, thank you, Micah, uh, it's in the title of the table. Uh, perhaps that should have been busted out and placed at its, as its own line item, but it's essentially saying that if you've got, you know, EVSE required space versus an EV ready space, one does not mean the other. So EV ready, you know, the EVSE space is going to have all of the components of the EV ready space. So you can't just say that, you know, your EVSE, your 10% of EVSE spaces would also cover the EV ready spaces. You need that. They are two separate uh, counts in your parking. Does that make sense? Awesome. Thanks. I just was 
but the title has a, a footnote C and not a footnote A. Oh, my apologies. That was all. Sorry That's about okay. That. It's not a problem. I just I just want to make sure that it if there's a footnote B and C that need to be there, is it missing? And so I wanted to ask and kind of figure out the footnotes of the table. So I appreciate the information. That is clear. Uh, I just wasn't sure where it applied. And then my question also, uh, you kind of mentioned and, and gone over the affordable housing definitions. Could you indicate where those came from again? And is that a consensus definition for affordable and moderate in, I think it's uh, low income household? Yes. So I, yeah, it's a really great question. And it was, it's been a little bit of a challenge, but you want to tie um, if we can tie affordable housing definition to something that the state already, already recognizes. I was able to find these definitions in, in that RCW 84.14.010 uh, for new and rehabilitated multiple unit dwellings in urban centers. If, if there are other suggestions as to um, other definitions that may also exist in the state law, um, then of course that would be appropriate as well. I don't know of any. I appreciate your short work on this as a quick turnaround. Um, of course, for my own opinion, I, I don't agree with us exempting out affordable housing um, even a little bit. I think that, you know, we're talking about equity in the long term. I think it's, um, you know, I think there's a more, a greater opportunity for folks that live in affordable housing to purchase an electrical vehicle than it would be for them to move to another housing unit that already has it installed per the code. So I, I, I really am not a fan of going that direction, but again, that's my own personal opinion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. I, I appreciate that and, and actually quite agree. I was, I was fearful that for, on one hand, I work with a lot of affordable um, housing developers and the struggles that they have just finding base fundings and the constant deficit and how many sources, you know, I'm working with one project that they had 15 funding sources just to acquire enough, you know, to, to for the development. And so I was afraid that um, as a first time requirement, if we could do the three years on something that might be palatable to, to the development community so that it doesn't tank the pro proposal in its entirety. And so, so by reducing it, you know, we've got a little bit of leeway there. You know, and, and it, I, I was thinking back about Dwayne Johnlin at, at City of Seattle and how he has been negotiating and has provided certain elements within the 2018 Energy Code amendments to, uh, to accommodate for the challenges that affordable housing developers have. And so, for example, in the solar requirements, they basically exempt affordable housing developments um, from the solar, uh, in, an installed solar requirement. And so there are provisions that, that, uh, that can help to kind of uh, expand the dollars that uh, the development community has to work with. Um, so that was the intent behind that, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Any other uh, questions, comments? And I'm sorry, this is Micah again. Is, is there a place we can see the entire proposal? I'm not sure we've scrolled all the way through the bottom to see what was changed from Kathleen's rest of the proposal. And I'm sorry, I didn't see that on the website I was looking or else I wouldn't have asked. <laughs> Yeah, my, my apologies. I It's just a capacity issue. I wasn't able to complete this until uh, early this morning. The, um, the only thing that changed beyond the point of that initial matrix was the matrix at the end, which um, identified the maximum number of EDSE per circuit breaker. And uh, uh, yeah, well, and so it, was just, do, it was just uh, eliminated. Oh, okay. The, the feedback from uh, the tag was that that actually is already managed in the electrical code, so it sounds like it was unnecessary. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? So regarding, regarding the electrical code, um, the the parameters of the uh, load management system 
are not in the electrical code. The electrical code allows a load management system to be installed and the calculation of the load on the service would be based on that load management, the settings of the load management system, the, but the parameters are not in there. That's why in Stoyan's other proposal, uh, there, was a, there was a statement about the capacity, uh, the load management system would allocate a minimum capacity to each vehicle. And that's probably a better way to, to discuss it than to say the number of vehicles that can be added to a circuit. So. Here is the exception for the load management system. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I have it as uh, 16 amps uh, per charger uh, because uh, of uh, the uh, level two uh, and uh, onboard uh, electric vehicle chargers, so 16 amps is kind of a, a, a good compromise for it. That, that's a great way to address it. If the if the uh, portions of this could be merged with uh, Swain's proposal, thank you. Any additional comments or questions? Andrew, can you remind me what the um, what the, the so the tag did look at this? The tag did look at this. Um, uh, you know, there were comments brought up. Um, the biggest comment that I heard was really about the equity that um, uh, that I think Micah brought up. Um, mm. You know, not wanting to, um, you know, that affordable houses should be treated the same. Uh, but ultimately, I maybe I'm projecting my own beliefs, but I, I think the tag didn't move it forward because there were um, comments on it, and because they didn't want to go above and beyond what we were mandated with um, by the legislature, which, you know, we, which is what we just discussed and recommended to put forward. Okay, so it was, so it was voted to push to the BFP with changes. No, it was voted to not move forward. Um, however, I, you know, Kathleen wanted to bring it up, you know, this is her second attempt. Um, you know, and, and like I said, she didn't, you know, she, she didn't have four hours to get it all massaged perfectly um, at the last meeting. So, um, you know, it's not like, um, you know, she, in, in some way, because of that, she didn't get a fair shake. So. Sure, sure. Is, is this something that, that uh, is the idea today is to push this to council? Or do we think that this needs to go back to the building pig to re-examine at this point? My concern is in this, is uh, the, the further we get away from the tags, I feel like the further we get away from the expertise, it always makes me a little nervous. And so I'm just wondering why it's here today and maybe not at the tag to be approved and pushed to the BFP. So it's here today because Kathleen has the right, you know, to have us consider it. Absolutely. We, could, we could send it back um, if we like the idea of it um, and ask the tag to, um, you know, work on it some more. Uh, we could disapprove it or we could modify it and send it forward or we could send it forward as is. Um, I think that's exhaustive. Well, no, and I, I agree. I just want to make sure that we're, we're doing this in a way that um, where we don't get something so far down the line that where there's still enough issues with it where it's just going to be a very combative process. So I'm just trying to clarify that. So it, it would be your recommendation then, Andrew, to push this to council as written. My recommendation? I mean, I'm just asking, like, what is that kind of the my personal? So this is my personal recommendation, and I hope I don't have to vote. I hope you two agree one way or the other. But I'm a proponent of hydrogen. Um, you know, I, I know I've been told that, uh, you know, there's not too much movement with that. But, you know, I, I think it just makes more sense. I, I see, you know, every major manufacturer makes, you know, a fuel cell vehicle. I think all the electric vehicles right now can easily be changed over to, to fuel cells. Uh, I, I'm i a proponent of that. You know, you can fill up at a gas station still with hydrogen. So I, I don't like the idea of adding EV chargers as a requirement in code. 
if a building owner wants to put it in, they can. So that's, those are just my personal thoughts. Um, and Andrew, may I, may I uh, speak to that if, if that's yeah, all right? Because I was, I, I, you, you brought up a really good point. So I went back to, um, I believe it was a state resource and found that only 41 vehicles have been um, identified in the state as using the hydrogen technology. And there are currently no, no public um, fueling stations, so to speak. So, because I, I wasn't quite sure what that percentage of vehicles is. And I believe Leah Misick is on the call. She may have more information as to projections of fuel type. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to speak to that very briefly. A really good resource for that is actually the um, Washington State Energy Strategy. They map out different pathways for Washington to achieve its greenhouse gas emissions reduction goals, what the most effective pathways are for different sectors. And they do have a, a pathway that looks at hydrogen and other sort of non-electricity fuel-based but clean um, resources. And that's actually slightly more expensive than the heavy electrification pathway. So I think there's definitely a use for hydrogen. Um, it's going to be more on the heavy duty vehicle side than the passenger vehicle side is what's being pointed to right now. And then, as Kathleen said, um, there are currently no hydrogen fueling stations in Washington state, unfortunately. Um, so it, it looks like hydrogen has its place. It's probably going to be for larger vehicles. Um, and again, the state energy strategy based on all the technological cost effectiveness projections is is looking at um, a higher percentage of electric, um, battery electric vehicles than, than hydrogen. Um, and I'm happy to, I'll put a link in the chat to the state energy strategy in that specific section, um, in, in the modeling section specifically, because the state energy strategy itself is more high level, but it's really interesting if, well, maybe I'm just a nerd, but it's interesting to go through and look at the different technological pathways they mapped out in the modeling. So I can include that link. Thank you. Yeah, sure thing. I'll be in a sec. Okay, um, any more questions, comments from anyone? Sorry to put it on the two of you. You know, I'm hoping that tomorrow we get some more uh, committee members so that, uh, you know, <laughs> you don't have these big decisions to make. <laughs> to make a motion, it's not gonna be popular, but it's, but it's my motion would be to push it to BFP and, or to the building tank and Start, start from there and I'm uncomfortable. Well, I'll bring that part up in discussion, but that's my motion. Okay. I'll second is. that. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Uh, I'll just add that um, <clears throat> that without approval from the building tag, I'm I'm uncomfortable pushing it forward to state building code council. So say it again, without the tag approval, you are still comfortable pushing it forward that no I'm, I'm i'm not comfortable pushing it forward without approval from the building tank first so can you uh tell me again what your uh michael will get to you in a second uh can you restate your motion then yeah maybe i said it wrong but my, my motion would be to push this back to the building tank back to the building maybe i heard it wrong i i thought we were pushing forward to the council Corey, is, is that what you seconded to or? Uh, yes, you... correct. I, I follow his logic in, in not being comfortable. The tag pushed it away and then it came here and it probably needs to get approved by the tag before we make a decision to push it to council. It makes sense to me. Okay, did you want to send it to the tag with any uh, any commentary or? Uh... Just with the new language that's brought forth uh, by Kathleen and Kathleen, thank you for your work on that. That's uh, not a knock on your work at all just for clarification it's more that as my background being fire and i, I don't want to speak for corey but he's plumbing um that just it, that seems a little out of my wheelhouse and so i'd like to see it at the tag level so all right thank you uh micah go ahead uh guess my was kind of a point of order question do we and, and maybe Stoyan can answer this and it's pointless but do we i know you have authority to send it back to the tag but do you have time to send it back to the tag considering that the public comments for this group of code change proposals is coming up, if I'm not mistaken, next month? Good question. We, uh, well, 
the council has the authority to send it back to tax. So let's say we will have, uh, we basically have more than 200 proposals for, for our, our, our three codes. So what the council can do, and I'll get back to the, the committee, but what the council can do, they can uh, uh, move forward with the proposals. Uh, they may uh, reject proposals or they may send proposals back to uh, the TAC. So if this happens, the TAC has to evaluate these proposals. So now the uh, standing committee is referring back to the TAC, uh, but uh, whether or not the TAC will have time to evaluate this and move it back to the council, currently I don't see how it's going to happen if there are not other proposals moved back to the TAC for discussion purposes. And uh, if Krista is still here, she is the person with the uh, uh, experience here. So uh, she may want to share if this happened before. I don't see Krista on the list. Here. I am here. Oh, um, okay. There are a lot of options. Um, the tag or the council could move to send it back to the tag and have a special meeting to consider what the tag comes up with. Uh, they could just push forward as uh, proposed or um, recommended by the building code tag. And this could come in as a public comment and modify that at that point or uh, it could be put in as two options for this section, so. Um, All right, um, so by sending it back to the tag, it's possible that we would kill it just because there wouldn't be time. Or the tag could stick to their original recommendation. So, Tony, um, with, oh. with that information, do you want to amend your motion or keep it where it is? The, there's discussion about the council being able to push it back to the tag, which is, um, which would be my recommendation now. And so if I were to push this to council, I would push it to council for consideration to send it back to the tag. That's how, what my motion would be aligned to. Because well, with I, the recommendation that they send it back to the tag, I guess. Yes, or the recommendation, yes. And they don't and they don't have to, obviously they can decide no, we'll take it as it is or whatever. So my concern again though is we're getting one more step out and move, removing it further and further away from the tag who specializes in it. So that's the reason that, well, that you're, is my concern. You're, you're punting it down. So you're saying you're still coming with a recommendation, you're just allowing the uh, full committee to weigh in and you know they can approve it they can modify and approve they can send it back but if they send it back it sounds like uh, we could then schedule uh, a um, uh, an interim meeting um, where it wouldn't definitely kill it so okay. that's what I'm hearing if the full uh, council sends it back then you know it's it's still in play whereas it could die if we send it back all right. Um, yes, and that's all I was questioning, Tony. Is I, I didn't, I didn't, I think your motion's fine. Your original motion was fine too. I was just questioning on timing, whether or not we actually had time to go back to the tag. And and if we all, if you feel we do, I'm I'm totally fine with that. I was just curious. It was, you know, I didn't want to. Well, I didn't want you to change your motion. <laughs> it just was timing question, and and maybe the proponent could weigh in on what their preference may be. I know that maybe doesn't uh, sway the vote, but maybe we could ask Kathleen as well. Well, before Kathleen, before you speak, did I summarize Krista and Stoyan what you were saying? If if we don't, if we want it to stay in play, with you know, definitely, then we should push it forward. Have the the full council send it back. Um, it, this is what I was trying to say, but I. Uh, uh, and my example with the council was because uh, uh, it buys uh, uh, some time. If you refer it back to the tax and the council doesn't have other proposals moved back to the tax, then you're killing it. Okay. Yeah, I, 
if 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 unless you want to kill it potentially, then uh, you probably want to make motion to send it forward to the tag uh, to the full council with the recommendation that they send it back to the tag. But you know whatever yeah. you're comfortable with. No, I'll, I'll I'll modify my motion to send it to the council uh, with recommendation to push it to the building tag. And I will second that motion. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And all those opposed, motion passes. All right. Was that the last item that we had here for uh, um, this agenda item? Yes, that is the last one. Okay. Dave, are you still on? I am. Okay. Um, well, well, let me ask first, uh, you know, you can weigh into since you'll be talking next. Um, who Does anyone need a bathroom break or can we push through? That's in my best interest right now. If we could just take like two or three minutes, that would be great. <laughs> let's do that. Um, right. Let's do a full 10 minutes. Sorry, Dave. I didn't mean that. <laughs> no problem. So, okay. Yeah, let's do a full 10 minutes and uh, then we'll resume. Thank you. I really, I really feel like I'm, I'm reliving my past life here, going to these long meetings. <laughs> um, one of the things that uh, we, that uh, there are three elevator jurisdictions across the state of Washington. One of the city of Spokane, city of Seattle, and the state. <clears throat> and in the past, uh, we have had data and information indicating to us that uh, the probability of fires in a pit. In the hydraulic elevator are almost insignificant. Uh, they are they are, they they do occur, but they're pretty insignificant. And <clears throat> we had had agreements with the state elevator inspector that as long as they met the requirements of the of the uh, international building code for the construction of the separation and all those other requirements, they would not require us to put uh, sprinklers in the pits for the elevator. Uh, the concerns for that is uh, the uh, hydraulic fluid is really it's not hydraulic so much anymore. It's more like a, a cooking oil type of, of a temperature. It has to be like 450 to 500 degrees to ignite. It has to have a ignition source. Um, the number of fires is just too low. The cost of the shunt trip and all the other things associated with uh, uh, being able to shut the power down before the fire sprinklers go off. Uh, it's, it's very questionable whether or not uh, it's actually viable to be able to do that. And our data was showing that uh, we we just don't have those fires. There's no buildup of debris in the elevator pits in the past. There isn't people smoking cigarettes, dropping their cigarettes down the elevator shaft as there were in the past. Um, <clears throat> but this, this last year, uh, the state elevator inspector has come to us and said, no, we have to follow it in FPA 13, which has a provision saying that if you have a hydraulic elevator, then you have to have a sprinkler system. Uh, even in the language of NFPA 13 in the commentary, it says you have to evaluate the, 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 the cost associated with it to the benefit that you get for putting sprinklers in an elevator pit and close enough to not, not to, to just leaving it out of the code. Uh, the state elevator inspector indicated that, well, you get it out of the code and we'll enforce it without the code because we agree. We don't think it's a problem, but it's in the code. So the proposal I put together was to basically remove the statement uh, saying if you had a hydraulic elevator that you'd have to have a sprinkler in the pit. Uh, and as we did it for the 2021 code, it came up to the possibility of, well, could we do that as an emergency rule and get it in incorporated into the current code? Because it does pose a hazard for responding firefighters that we could be put into an elevator going up uh, to another floor in a building and having the power shut off and we're actually trapping uh, the first responders in the elevator shaft. Uh, for that reason, a number of fire departments do not use the elevators during a fire event. They would, the fire is out before they would use the elevators. So a lot of, a lot of stairs are being uh, climbed. It's a delay in response to some of the floors. Uh, so and, you know, for 20, 30 years, I've kind of worked with this uh, and seeing how this works and how different jurisdictions work. And it always seemed to be the best way to go is we just don't need sprinklers in those pits. It just isn't warranted anymore. NFPA has a number of studies that just doesn't show that there's fires in pits anymore, that there, there's 210 elevator fires a year. And almost all those are not even in the pits, like two or three of them are in the pit. It's usually caused by something other than the hydraulic system. 
So uh, this is something that uh, I felt would be viable to be able to go towards uh, the emergency rule because it's putting a huge cost onto the, the building owners of putting these in. And it does put the firefighters in harm's way uh, that they could possibly become trapped in elevators and on a hydraulic elevator system. So I'm requesting the BFP consider by moving this forward as emergency rule. Hey Dave, and I'm in 100% agreement with everything you said. So thank you for putting that together. Um, questions, comments? Um, Tony, uh, Corey, would either of you like to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we um, <clears throat> adopt this uh, emergency rule and push it forward to the council. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any further discussion? Looks like Micah has his hand up. Oh, yep. Go ahead, Micah. Sorry, you know me always asking questions. Um, thanks, David, for putting this together. Um, kind of a question: you're you're accepting out specific standards for the installation of sprinklers, but there's no other identification of changes in the body of the code or Chapter 30 of the code. Is that correct? I just want to make sure I'm seeing that accurate. <clears throat> That, that is correct. There's only one place that refers to the hydraulic elevators, and that's in NFPA 13. Any other questions or comments? Andrew, I'll just add that this was a proposal for the 2021 codes that's being pushed to the council tomorrow as well. So if that helps decide on anybody's decision. All right. Thank you, Ray. Anything else? We've got a motion on the table. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. So, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> yep. Um, okay, Pierce County Residential Amendment Approval Request. For uh, uh, Pierce County, uh, they ask if we can uh, table it until the October meeting. And I, I, I said, yes, I, I just got the email a few hours ago. All righty. Um, we don't need to make a motion. Nope. Okay. It's, uh, they submitted the package. Uh, uh, there were some issues with the justification. Uh, and uh, I just got the email this morning saying that, uh, uh, can we do it uh, in the meeting in October, which right. I, 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 I was happy to accept. <laughs> Me too. Okay. Other business. Does staff have any? No. Micah's hand is still raised. Does he have another question? Micah? Nah. I did. <laughs> I always have questions. Um, but I forgot it, so we're good. We come back up with it, I'll raise my hand again. All right. So, all right, it sounds like staff has nothing. It, 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 just a little bit of extra information. Again, the meeting tomorrow will be, uh, uh, well, difficult. And uh, we have in the agenda, uh, uh, filling up the standing committees and, uh, 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 the residential court attack formally doesn't have a, a, a chair, but um, again, um, I will provide you with some extra information uh, uh, tomorrow morning. So the uh, I, I hope we'll have the time to uh, finish the uh, new uh, standing committee appointments. Okay, Micah, you remembered your question or you have a new one? I did remember my question. I was going to ask if Stoyan could, um, if, if we don't need an answer today, but maybe tomorrow provide us some information on going back to in-person meetings and what are the options that are being looked at for that in the future? Well, for the in-person meetings, the idea was uh, we would have the, meet, the meeting in September uh, in Spokane. So it was planned for in-person meeting. However, uh, when uh, the COVID cases started raising up uh, and uh, the state started uh, changing the rules, uh, uh, we decided to keep it uh, online. So I don't, I don't have a direct answer for you because 
uh, uh, let's let's do it meeting by meeting because I don't have a, a, a direction for the next few months. All righty. Any other comments or questions? Well, thank you, folks. We'll adjourn. Um, and I'll see a lot of you tomorrow. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Corey. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow.